For centuries, women have had a riveting presence in the world of sports. Women's sport has generated overwhelming acceptance throughout the world. This became even more phenomenal and prominent, especially in the last quarter of the 20th century through to the present times. This, of course, reflects the profound changes in society, which is increasingly emphasizing gender parity. The level of women participation in sport, however, varies depending on countries and the particular sport involved. Secondly, despite the rise in women participation in sports, there is still a yawning and palpable gap comparatively with their male counterparts. These disparities are a global problem and continue to hinder equality in sports. There are many institutions and programs that hold back on facilitating or contributing to the ideals of gender equity in sports. Sports women all over the world face obstacles that range from lower salaries, fewer sponsorships, poor contracts and inadequate or no media attention. In other words, and in the broader factor of ratings, women are at the bottom of the ladder. While women make up about 40% of athletes in sports, they get only 4% of media coverage. Women's sports are not considered with a deserved priority. Consequently, sports engagement for women are scheduled in less than desirable times and are barely talked about on the media. The lack of publicity makes them less anticipated nor watched, which in turn affects revenue generation a key driver in today's sporting world. Similarly, in sports administration and coaching, women totter at merely 18% as qualified handlers and 9% of the senior coaching bracket. Nearly 40% of women in the sports industry face discrimination based on gender. While males in sports are seen as breathing heroes, the women are demeaned objectified and sexualized. Their physical looks tend to get more attention than their skills. Understandably, the women are reacting vehemently to the dissenting situation. For instance, on March 8, 2019, some 28 national team players in the US filed a gender discrimination lawsuit against the United States Soccer Federation. The players claimed to have played and won more games than the male team but still get paid lower. The player said that institutionalized gender discrimination had not only affected their paychecks but also affected their health care, training facilities, coaching and travel arrangements for games. Serena Williams, a world famous tennis champion after being charged with verbal abuse among other violations during the US Open finals once expressed concerns over gender inequality. Williams was quick to point out that male players have been known to have said far worse but barely got a slap on the wrist. There have also been other cases of gender inequality in sports that have been left untreated. Another interesting case is that of Lara Lugli, an Italian volleyball player who was fired after telling her employer she was pregnant. Though she miscarried a month later, the club refused to pay her £2,500 and instead sued her, accusing her of disproportionately selling her experience and hiding her desire to be a mother. In Nigeria, a marginal number of women participate in sports at peak levels as players, coaches or administrators. This is not as a result of lack of interest nor ability. No, it is largely a function of cultural stereotype in the country. A constant narrative seems to run in the society about the women's place being at home and sporting and even watching sporting events is seen as a thing for the male. Nigeria's Olympic gold medalist Shoma Ajungwa once blamed the country for failing to follow up on athletes and also not giving women athletes necessary amenities needed to sustain peak performance. 
Ajungwa, who won a gold medal in 1996 Olympics in the long jump category, was the first female black African to ever get a gold medal. And that was the last time a Nigerian woman won gold. Till today, she remains the only individual female Olympic gold medalist from the country. She cites herself as an example of displeased athletes who are saddened by how females are sidelined and abandoned by the country after every tournament. Falilats Okungoya, a Nigerian athlete and multiple time Olympic gold medalist, has also been publicly vocal over how mistreatment caused her to lose the willpower and stamina to continue. One of her vehement concerns is that females are seldom allowed to run, coach, or head sports in Nigeria. She also named corruption, poor administration, poor policies as setbacks to the Nigerian sports. Instructively, the Nigerian women's national football side, the Super Falcons, are on record to have won the African Women's Cup of Nations 11 times compared to the male team, the Super Eagles, which has won three times. The women's national team, Super Falcons, are currently the only national team from the Confederation of African Football to have reached the quarterfinals in both the FIFA Women's World Cup and football at the Summer Olympics. The female national team has won more medals and reached higher limits than their male counterparts, but are still rated lower, paid less, and disproportionately publicized and appreciated as deserved. Apart from track and field events and football, women have also flown the nation's flag to high levels in other sports like table tennis, boxing, weightlifting, and handball, among others. In this breath, the Nigerian female basketball team known as the Tigress has never failed to make the nation proud. They are one of the most successful African teams and are currently the champions. The females perform measures to redeem the situation requires policy rethink by the government, various sports agencies and private sector action to sustain the efforts of women in sports. Measures that step up better welfare budgets, equitable salary, better media exposure and general societal attitude will certainly guarantee higher sporting laurels for Nigeria in the kitty.